Hello, I'm Dinis Demir. dreams to come true um, you have to be hard working you have to work towards it if you sleep and think that dream is going to come through I don't think it's going to come it's not so keep on the courage yeah. and be determined for, to get what you want and trust me you're gonna have it okay at the end. so this morning in sunrise today we have to be looking at different issues in the program mm -hmm. and um, first we had that president's view actually granted um, citizenship to 22 American Sierra Unions and this morning we are with um, um, Diana Amin who is one of the 22 American Sierra Unions that was granted citizenship by the president is going to take us through um, how it feels like to be a citizen now of Sierra Leone. Good morning and welcome to the program Diana. Good morning thank you for having me. Okay so also in the program today we are also in the studio with uh, Mahmoud Sharif, the president of Peace Society, Fawabe College, University of Sierra Leone, and he'll be looking at the importance of peace and conflict courts in Sierra Leone. <coughs> good morning and welcome to Sunrise today. Yes, good morning, Cecilia. It's okay. A pleasure to be here. Okay, thank you. Um, let's start with you, um, yes. Diana. Yes. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you as well. I'm happy to be in Sierra Leone, and I'm happy to be officially. Sierra Leone. Oh, I can sense the happiness in your face. Thank you. Thank you. The thank smiles you. and all of that. <laughs> you look good you. anyway. You look good. Thank you. <laughs> you look good too. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So take us through that particular day. How did you feel um, being granted citizenship by the president of Sierra Leone? You know, uh, what um, President Bio, uh, what he was able to do for us. Uh, is monumental because it's not offered anywhere else on the continent. So what President Bio is doing is he's setting a standard that other countries in Africa should follow. So us being uh, African American or um, descendants of who are affected by the slave trade, you know, we were disconnected from the continent. You know, our identity our language, our culture was taken from us. So many of us, like me, you know, started to travel back to Africa. I started to travel back in 2011. And you know, you, you, you arrive, they find out you're a black American, and they tell you, welcome home, brother. Welcome home, this is the land of your ancestors. They take you to the, the slave dungeons where our ancestors were taken against their will and voluntarily and shipped to the West to build the West. And they tell us, you know, brother, you know, you go to Gory Island, Bunce Island, uh, Elmina Castle, Cape Coast Castle, you know, they tell you this is where your this is where your ancestors were taken from. Against their free will as slaves to build the West. But then you you know, you say, okay, well since my ancestors came from here, uh, how do I get citizenship? And for the longest, that's where the disconnect has been. Because we know our ancestors were removed from Africa, shipped to the West. The descendants of those ancestors return, but then you inquire on citizenship, then here comes the Constitution and the red tape, and here's, you have to have this formal process, you have to be here 15 years, five years, depending on the country. But we're like, we didn't choose to leave. So what uh, President Bill has implemented is a process that if your DNA, uh, if you go through African ancestry, and if your DNA results come back and it's from one of the tribes that reside here or from here, is from here uh, in Sierra Leone, you now can have citizenship as if your parents were born here. And no other African country has done that. Okay. So President Bio deserves a round of applause. Uh, what he's doing is monumental. He's setting a standard that needs to be followed because, you know, at times many black Americans get frustrated because, again, we're told we were taken from here, then we return, and then for us to be officially recognized, mm -hmm. you know, it's always been this long, drawn out process or here's the Constitution, here's this red tape, you have to follow these rules. So, I mean, it's a blessing. Uh, I'm, I'm thankful. I'm excited. 
And now it's more than just becoming Sierra Leone and being granted a passport. Mm -hmm. You know, now it's time to contribute. Okay. Obviously, there are a lot of skills and knowledge that we have picked up in the West. Mm -hmm. So definitely, we'll come to what will happen to you now okay. that you're a citizen of Sierra okay. Leone. First, um, take us through your background. You were talking about um, if your parents are Sierra Leoneans and then, um, of course, your your DNA matches yeah. any of the tribe in Sierra Leone. So what's your background from your family side? Uh, so 2013, I did a DNA test through African Ancestry. Okay. And I'm Balata, I'm Yoruba. On uh, one side, then on my mother's side, I Minde. Okay. So, you know, so I had that certificate since 2013. Even before 2013, an actor by the name of Isaiah Washington, he came, and they granted him citizenship based on his DNA results. But there wasn't a formal process for people who weren't actors or people who were. Uh, you know, celebrities, because you know, Isaiah Washington is a celebrity. Okay. So there were several people who were here in Sierra Leone that came from America. Shout out to uh, Chief uh, Fode, who sat down with Monuments and Relics um, and discussed how can we implement this process for, you know, regular black Americans who aren't um, celebrities but can prove that they have DNA from Sierra Leone. So I want to say um, either March or April, well, yeah, or maybe even November of 2019, another group came, mm -hmm. and they weren't expecting to get citizenship. It was a group of uh, Mende descendants, and President Beal surprised them and gave them citizenship. Mm -hmm. So now there's uh, a formal process that's being implemented that if you go, if you could prove that your DNA comes from Sierra Leone. You now contact Monuments and Relics, uh, who's uh, part of the, the, the government, tourism. You contact them, then, you know, there's a, now a formal process for those who, uh, you know, who just don't want, who not only want to become citizens, but it's, it's, it's bigger than that. You know, it's bigger than just getting that green passport. You know, it's time to contribute. Okay. You know, we brag about how we built the West. Mm -hmm you know, through slave labor, but then many of us, we, we have all these excuses why we can't come and build Africa. Okay, well, before going into Okay, I'm sorry, okay, I'm sorry. Yes, um, yeah. so take us through the process of before you guys actually had that citizenship. How was the process like? Okay, so you take your DNA test. Okay. Contact my name is Relics. Okay. All right, they outline it. So you had to come to Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. All right, they took uh, groups to immigration like you, you bring all your paperwork like for me I have to bring my DNA results uh, birth certificate mm -hmm. uh, you know passport you know if I had any other nationalities um, and, and, and that was about it fill out the application pay the fee I think it's like 95 USD or 95 uh, thousand okay. well 950,000 um, uh, salons mm -hmm. and then you go to immigration and it's like a regular process you get fingerprinted, photo taken, um, then you're actually sworn in by the president. So on January 5th, we uh, we went to the State House, we had a formal ceremony, okay. the president spoke to us, mm -hmm. we took our oath. Okay, um, um, you know, I want to know what actually prompts you people to actually get your nationality, okay. your, your, your passports, Okay. you know, what actually, um, um, actually led to this? citizenship thing, what oh. really prompts you people. Okay, so as far as me, I can speak for myself. Okay. So 2011, I went to Tanzania. Okay. So I, I remember I landed at Julius Nairi Airport. I come out uh, to like the common area to pick up my, to get, uh, to catch my taxi. Mm -hmm. And then as I walked out the airport, I'm waiting, I have my bags, I'm waiting for my taxi. Mm -hmm. The local Tanzanians came up to me and they started speaking Swahili. Mm -hmm. And I just looked at them, I said, I don't know. So then they asked, are you... South African? I said no. They said, are you Ghanaian? I said no. They said, are you Nigerian? Which I am as well. At that time I didn't know, I said no. They said, where are you from? I said, I'm from America. They said, no, 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 no. Where are you from? It has to be your origin point. Right, exactly. I said, I don't know. I, we got disconnected from that. I don't know. Okay. So they said, okay, well, what tribe are you from? And it's just what I'm noticing a lot of uh, people on the continent don't understand the impact the slave trade had. And so I said, I don't know. 
So after not knowing, it prompted me to do a DNA test, like I researched, to find out where I actually come from. So that's what prompted me to do a DNA test, and I found out that my mom found I was Mende. And then as far as nationality, um, certain people wanted to leverage that to gain citizenship. Because again, as we come and visit, if we're told that we are from here, and that we were forcibly removed from here, and if we're descendants of those ancestors that came here, why is it such a hard process for us to get citizenship for those who are serious about becoming citizens of an African country? So then that's where the DNA came into, came into play. Okay, so, so uh, uh, let's hold it a bit. Yeah. Uh, so over to you, Momoju. Yeah, yeah. Mamoudi, yeah. Mamoudi, Mamoudi. Okay, sorry. Um, so how did this um, association came about? You know, you guys forming this Peace and Conflict Association, you being the president, how did it come about? You mean as an academic discipline? Yes. Or Okay, it, the the discipline itself, peace and conflict studies, mm -hmm. has a normative origin. It all began just after the First World War. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of attempts by international institutions and um, universities across the world to actually bring out, to understand the relevance of peace and as well to do a research so as to as well bring out the possible causes of the First World War and possibly other wars that had occurred by then. Um, uh, in 1940, uh, a professorship was established in the University of Wales to actually study the fundamental causes of violence and why. Because before then we had international relations scholars who were actually theorizing, given mere theories about human behaviors and interactions. So it became evident at then that uh, an academic discipline is actually needed to study the behavior of human beings and to actually give solutions to the, uh, the, 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 the violence that occurred at then. So as a result of that, we had a lot of universities actually bringing out people like Jordan Gatton, Alice Bolden, Kenneth Bolden, actually started bringing out the ideas. Mm -hmm. He wrote a journal called the Journal for Peace, and the idea actually began. So when the United Nations was actually formed in the year 1945, they saw the need uh, that there was actually no way to maintain international peace and security without actually creating an institution that could teach the values of those peace, security, and development. As a result of that, studies began around those areas. So in Sierra Leone specifically, after the rebel war, I, as you were talking, mm -hmm. the rebel war actually was a tumultuous incident in Sierra Leone. It all began as a result of the fact that the government had then uh, could not provide adequate security for communities, so people or rebel factions actually took advantage of that. They invaded. But the brutal rebel war, which actually led to the killings of so many people and a lot of destructions of properties after that war, there was a need to establish as well an academic discipline mm. that could provide graduates to actually study and to build institutions, to work in those institutions for peace building, for peacemaking, and peacekeeping. And we saw a lot of United Nations efforts in bringing out those institutions and actually supporting them as well. And in the year just after 2002, the Department of Peace and Complete Studies was actually established in Frobe College, first as a unit on the political okay. science. Later, it became a dependent department on its okay. own. So since 2002 up to date, what has been some of the success stories of the departments in Frobe College? Uh, they are immense. We, we, if we want to look at the success, we don't see the present stability and development we have today is as a result of the fact that we have such departments actually. Yeah, the department has produced a graduate student that have actually uh, worked thoroughly in this country, and yes, they are working. If you want to look at the European Union, if you want to look at institutions like the American Embassy, we have Sishu Mohamed Sharif serving as the political specialist there. We have other institutions like the United Nations. We have a segment of it here. We have these students working there. We have the National Commissions for Democracy. We have these students working there. And recently, the president as well is about to actually institute a very, very important institution called the National Commission for Peace. We would actually need expertise, people who understand the true phenomena of peace and conflict studies to actually be working in those institutions. And after the war, nearly two decades, Sierra Leone is actually now not a post-conflict country, though even though we are actually being faced with some of the post-conflict trajectories, but yet still, peace building is going on. These are all activities undertaken by peace graduates. Yes, Sierra Leone is considered to be one of the most 
peaceful countries across the globe. Sure. But then a lot of people do not see the impacts of um, peace and conflict cause in, in, in Faber College. A lot of people do not recognize it. I mean, for a cause that has been existing since 2002, yeah. we have causes that came like just five years ago. People prefer to go for other causes than peace and conflict. So what is the relevance of a student after WASC ex examination to go in for peace and conflict? Why do you think it's, it's relevant for someone to study peace and conflict? <laughs> yeah, that is quite funny though. Um, you, you realize that um, there are a stereotype against or around anything in the world. Okay. The, the Department of Peace or the Discipline of Peace as an academic studies is actually something very difficult. It has a very humble surface when you say peace and conflict studies, but much more a complex meaning. So it actually takes people to to understand what actually peace and conflict studies mean. You understand? We have multitude of those institutions established in the Western world, in the United States, in England, in Costa Rica. In fact, I think it's one of the, the actually the, the, the an academic arena that actually has been established by United Nations Resolution Council in, 19, in 1980, you understand? So in Sierra Leone here, there is a need that we actually disabuse people, we educate them on the relevance of peace. That if Sierra Leone as a country should actually be developed then an academic discipline like peace and conflict studies should actually be enhanced. The development of any country is actually predicated on the peacefulness of that country, is not so? Yeah. So then if that is actually so, do we not need people that can actually study the true values, the true meaning of such an academic discipline in a bit to actually preach it to others, to teach others so that they can learn and uh, ensure that we have a sort of peace building process in the country. Uh, development can never actually be visible in Sierra Leone if we cannot have peace, if we cannot have people who do understand what peace Okay, so um, 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 one would want to say, um, why should I go study peace and conflicts when I'm actually in Sierra Leone, one of the peaceful countries, yeah, and um, it's, it's not even marketable. Um, some will say that in Sierra Leone here because they're saying Sierra Leone is one of the peaceful countries. So how far are you guys going to change that narrative about people, Yes, especially uh, students in universities? That is actually more or less, I would say, it's, it's actually been a political rhetoric. Many people have said so. The current president we have in Sierra Leone is mm -hmm. a peace student. He pursued his PhD in peace and conflict studies. The chief minister we have in Sierra Leone is as well a peace student. Mm -hmm. He lectured at uh, Bradford University. Those are indications that the, the, the marketability is actually out there. But however educated you are, you have to market yourself to the world. Mm -hmm. Now here the thing is very, very much clear. Um, students should come to learn to actually read and understand what peace is about. And let me tell you this, this is not a time of conflict. So like the, the, the insinuation normally are, uh, we are not in a conflict situation, so why study peace? Yeah, that is actually the thing. So let's say now you are in a peaceful situation, do you not actually have to study the peace you are in so that you are actually able to make provision for its continuity? Definitely there is a need for you to try to understand that you live in first in a peaceful situation and for you to understand the relevance of the peace you're living in. Because if you don't understand the relevance of the peace you're living in, as you said Sierra Leone is a peaceful country relatively, then what is going to be the outcome of it? So there is a need to understand the true relevance of the peace first you're living in. All right, let's hold it there. Over to you, Diana. Mm -hmm. um, now that you're in Sierra Leone, yes. What will be what will become of you now that you're Sierra Leone? What you plan to bring to Sierra Leone as a citizen now? I want to contribute. I want to be a resource. You know, it's not just about you know becoming a citizen. It's just the start. You know, now it's time to contribute and help build and make it a, a uh, make an impact on Sierra Leone. So that's what I'm. That's my goal. That's those are my objectives. So. We're going to be focusing on tourism uh, and estates, as far as real estate. Uh, Sierra Leone is a beautiful country. Oh man, it's a it's the most beautiful country I've ever laid eyes on, ever stepped foot on. I've been to uh, roughly seventeen African countries, and my first time coming to Sierra Leone was uh, December two thousand and nineteen. And I, and I and I asked myself, why did I wait so long to come here? This place is 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 beautiful. So right now it's about bringing awareness to Sierra Leone, bringing opportunities to Sierra Leone, and just and just creating and being you know uh, uh, an impact on the people, a resource. So that's that's what uh, my objective is. I'm hoping others who uh, receive their citizenship that that's what they're wanting to accomplish as well. 
because uh, again it's not just about just getting your passports or you know some people you know I, I talk to some people it's like they just want passport on arrival they want the passports then they want to go back to America and just brag how they have this Sierra Leone passport mm -hmm. it's like no bring your skills here, here to Africa and play a role in the development of the continent play a role in the development of Sierra Leone. Apart from apart from America, do you have citizenship in any other country? I see you have a bit there, and mm -hmm. that's so common with Nigerians. Right, right. The royalty. Do, are you related to any Nigerian? I'm Nigerian too. Okay, so, so I'm you Black have American, Nigerian, and I'm Sierra Leone. So you have dual citizenship. With a triple. Oh wow. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Don't you think you're going to have any conflict of interest when it comes to situations where it involves Nigerians, it involves Sierra Leoneans, and it involves Americans as well? Uh, absolutely not. I mean, you know, I was talking to my my African immigrant friend. Mm -hmm. So, you have an African, Sierra Leone, he's from Cote d'Ivoire. He goes to France, mm -hmm. his former colonial master. He gets his citizenship. He takes an oath to his former colonial master. He's then celebrated. Yes, I have this French passport. I have this French citizenship of his former colonial master. Mm -hmm. Sierra Leonean, Nigerian, Ghanaian, they go to the UK. They do the same thing. Okay. They complain about how these countries are in their affairs, how they're disturbing their countries. Mm -hmm. But no one ever questions if that's a conflict of interest. Okay. Um, um, before going to the text messages that we have here with you both, uh -huh. um, take us through what are some of the things that we should be expecting from you personally? Me personally? Yeah. Yeah. Focus on tourism, okay. awareness to um, bringing awareness to Sierra Leone, bringing mm -hmm. people to Sierra Leone, and um, another focus on media. I want to get involved in media as well, as far as spotlighting, spotlighting Sierra Leone. Okay. And then um, Estates. We're going to be focusing on real uh, development, construction in the state as well, because that's what I do in America too. Okay. So um, over to you, Mahmoud. Yeah. What you really want to say as a final word within a um, few seconds to to peace and conflict people there and students who are actually studying to the worst exams coming, you know, encouraging them about peace and conflict studies. Yes, I want to say the the academic discipline of peace. And complex studies is not all about understanding violence and peace. It's as well go beyond. It goes beyond that. We have areas like international humanitarian law, areas like security studies, areas like public sector reform, natural resource governance, mm -hmm. and many more that we actually do to ensure that we broaden the horizon or the the, 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 the mind of the students is actually open to understand the multitude of issues happening around the world, contemporary issues in the world. Okay, so we want to encourage them to come and learn and as well to be able to be developmental to the nation as a whole and to help in maintaining international peace, security and development. Okay, so um, a lot of times um, students only go in for peace and conflict probably when they do not attain the requirements to go study law, mm -hmm. mass communication or other causes. That's the time they think about um, peace and conflicts mm -hmm. and then you accept those students. Don't you think it is because people see peace and conflict as second option in most cases that's why people look down on the cause because we don't see much of people actually applying for peace and conflict directly from from us that is not true i don't know if you've been to the department to actually observe and be able to come up with that particular opinion no, but, but i i applied let me come okay. i applied for mm -hmm. peace and conflict studies when i sat to us okay. you understand and a lot of my colleagues the thing here is there is a stereotype like, around the name because people don't actually understand it. yes I, even I, educated I, individuals uh -huh. have made similar mistakes i think that is where wearing awareness counts a lot you Very know well. creating awareness for, for people yes. who are actually going into universities every year yes because uh, trust me we're looking at the majority here yeah. the majority of the people who are going they're going for those core causes that you think causes that you think are core yeah. you understand like as in law yeah. um, 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 journalism and all other related causes related causes sorry yeah. you know so that is where awareness counts how far have you guys gone in creating that awareness for them well that is where that is something we've just began okay mm -hmm. and um, we are going to make sure that it continues uh, over the years we have actually not been much more engaged into 
creating this uh, conscienti conscientizing people into creating this awareness. But we believe it's actually necessary. The university over the time believe that people should actually try to learn, to learn about the deeper. And peace and complete studies is a core cause. If you go to the Western world, it's actually making a very big name on the Capitol Hill. You understand? It's not anything you can say it is below or whatever. It is actually making name. And it, it actually forms one of the major, when you say the social sciences, it forms one of the major principles. It's just like your desire to learn. People want to become lawyers. People, people want to become uh, journalists. People want to become uh, engineers. You understand? And as well, people want to become peace practitioners. You understand? Okay. So then there is a need for everybody to actually uh, uh, understand, and I think the responsibility is on us to educate people about what peace is. That it's not only about conflict or peace. It's about development as well. Okay. It's about gender as well. It's about immigration as well. It's about security as well. Okay. I so think quickly, we... let's take um, some mm -hmm. sets of messages before okay. you leave. Yeah. Um, this one is saying, Mr. Dine, we love you and we're glad to have you home back. It's coming from Alessine King in Freetown. Okay, here I have one which says, how can you relate your stay in the U.S. over the years? Daniel Sani from Calvaton. Another one is saying, now you're here, what are your plans for our motherland? Asia to Jalo. Okay, another one here is saying, peace and conflict students should be given the opportunity to explore in the country, showcase the importance of the cause. Okay, another one is saying, Dinas, how did you find your way home? It's coming from Mohammed Kamara. Okay, this one is saying here, what happened with, what happened here with the Peace and Conflict um, Association, even though we're having riots every day in a college? Okay, that one is coming from Abubakar in Another Mosul one town. is saying, so you are now a citizen of Sierra Leone. What are your plans ahead for Sierra Leone? Moses Kai Moe. Okay, I think that's the final set of messages. So quickly, before we take a break, um, let's hear from you, Dinas. Respond to these messages quickly. No, I think um, the, the, the plan for Sierra Leone is to bring resources and opportunities, create opportunities okay. for the people of Sierra Leone. That's the plan. All right. Okay. So what about you? Respond to these messages. Okay. I think somebody said we should be given the opportunity to explore. I think